the integrals that we have seen up to this point have all been nice in the sense that we haven't had to mess around with infinity. For instance, we've had definite integrals where they go from a to b and both a and b are finite numbers. And likewise, the integral from a to b of some function that we've seen have also, the, the output has always been finite numbers thus far. So in this video, we're going to deal with improper integrals, which are going to be a couple different ways by which infinity is going to be able to sneak in. So, for instance, suppose I did this, the integral of some function between a and, not a finite number b, between a and infinity. So this is the first place where an infinity can manage to sneak in. And we might be tempted, we might be tempted down the bad idea of saying, well, look, let's just apply the fundamental theorem of calculus. We have this particular integral. I'm going to take the antiderivative f, I'm going to evaluate it at infinity, and I'm going to subtract off the antiderivative at a. Indeed, if we were doing the integral from a to b, it would be f of b minus f of a. That's the fundamental theorem of calculus, which has been really powerful for us, and we've used it all the time. But this is nonsense. Infinity isn't a number. I can't just evaluate some function at infinity. Infinity is this sort of, this concept, this concept is a little bit murky still to us, but we've... Infinity is this concept, one that admittedly has remained a little bit murky for us, but that we've managed to deal with by introducing some notion of a limit. So this bad idea doesn't work at all, it's just mathematical nonsense, but we're going to introduce a limiting definition instead. We are going to say the integral from a to x is instead this, this a up to t here, and then I take the limit as my t is going to be going to infinity. Now, the idea here is that suppose my function was positive, then, then an integral is always just an area under the curve. Uh, if it's not positive, then it would be some sort of signed area under the curve. And what we're going to be doing is, for a definite integral, we take the area under the curve between an a and a b, but here we're going the area under the curve between an a and an endpoint that is arbitrarily large, that is as far off as we like it, is the limit as the other endpoint goes to infinity. We're going to say that if this limit exists, if this limit exists, then the integral is going to converge, and it converges to whatever the value of this limit is. Indeed, the integral from a to t of f of t, f of x dx, that is just some function, some function of t. So for every t that has some number, at least it has some number if we assume that the, the integral from a to t of f of t dt is always defined. I haven't written it down, but that is part of our assumption that this expression that we have on the right-hand side is defined for every single value of t. But if that's the case, then it's just some function, and we're taking the limit of some function of t. And therefore, whatever the value of that limit is, is going to be the value of this improper integral. If this is not the case, if the limit does not exist, if maybe it diverges to infinity or it oscillates or diverges to minus infinity, diff many different possibilities, if the limit doesn't exist, then we're going to say that it diverges. We can also deal with the same thing if it's on the bottom. If I wanted to take the integral from, say, minus infinity up to some value, maybe I'll call it b of my f of x dx, well, then I would simply replace the infinity by a limit, a t goes to minus infinity, of the integral from t to b of f of x dx. Okay, so here we have a specific example. And the first point I want to look at is the geometric interpretation. So the graph of this function, x e to the minus x, looks like this. And so what we're actually doing when we try to describe this integral from zero to infinity, we know that definite integrals, zero up to some number like seven, these represent areas under the curve. And so the integral from zero to infinity, it is going to be some area under the curve. It's going to represent all of this stuff here. I can fill in and I can fill in and then I sort of have to get smaller than my brush can do because I, I want to fill in almost to infinity at this point. We're expecting there to be sort of this, this limiting concept. The, the height gets like smaller and smaller and smaller, but it, it keeps on going on forever. Now, you might wonder, is this area under this curve a finite number or is it an infinite number? And we actually won't know until we do the calculation. 
The argument that it would be an infinite number is that it, it goes on forever. It's continually adding stuff. But the, the argument that it's a finite number would be to say, well, yes, you're going on forever, but you're adding smaller and smaller and smaller amounts so that they, they add up to some finite thing. So we don't know which of these dominate yet until we actually do the computation. But nonetheless, we're, we're trying to figure out what is this area under this graph that sort of goes on forever, but gets smaller and smaller and smaller as the e to the minus x term dominates. So computing by our definition, this is the limit as t goes to infinity of the integral from 0 up to t of x e to the minus x dx. Now, here we have to actually do these, these integrals, these integrals from 0 to t. This is a definite integral. We know how to do it. It's x e to the minus x. And so I can do this by integration by parts. So let's speed through the integration by parts process. I'm just going to say my u is equal to the polynomial term. That's x. My du is going to be just dx. Therefore, I'm setting my dv to be what remains, the e to the minus x dx. And integrating my dv, I'm going to have a minus e to the minus x. So now I want to take my substitution and I want to put it in. But, but notice what I'm going to do. I'm going to take this t goes to infinity business, and I'm just going to leave it out the front. I'm going to forget about it for a while while I'm in the midst of this integration by parts question. So uh, how does integration by parts work? It's going to be the u dv is transferred to u times v. So this is x times e to the minus x. And then I evaluate between 0 and t minus the integral from 0 to t up to v du, so another minus, I'm going to come and put a plus in, e to the minus x dx. So it's exactly what we've done before, except I just have this sort of limit sign stuck out the front, and I'm going to carry on with this process because I'm not really done with my computation. I'm going to leave that limit as t goes to infinity out the front. I'm going to see that this looks like t with a minus sign, e to the minus t, right? And then I know how to do the integral of e to the minus x. It's going to be a minus sign uh, e to the minus. And I'm just going to come along and write x here, but evaluated between 0 and t. One more line here. And then we can deal with this t to infinity that we have stuck out the front. All right. Haven't changed the first of all. This, the first component, this is minus t e to the minus t, exactly as it was before. And then finally, I'm subtracting off um, e to the minus t and then plus an e to the 0, which is just a 1. All right. So the middle of that was just an integration by parts question, as we could have done ages ago. But now comes the interesting part. I have to evaluate the limit. Now, this is just some function of t that I have in the brackets. And I can evaluate the limit as I would have any other function of t back in the day in calculus 1. So first are the terms t times e to the minus t. You might have remembered t e to the minus t. The, the e to the minus t term completely dominates. You could use L'Hopital's rule, for instance, to verify that fact. So this is going to be 0 for the first term. And then, again, a 0 for the second term. But now I've got this plus 1, this line around, so I'm going to leave a plus 1. And so that's my answer. The, the integral from 0 to infinity of x e to the minus x is just equal to 1. It's kind of interesting that we have this finite area. Or in other words, it converges.